Hey, welcome back to the Big Ranch Show. As always, thank you for joining me. If you could, hit that subscribe button down below, and let's get right to it. Now, have you seen this Twitter feud that Donald Trump has been having with Amazon, of all people? He's been attacking Amazon since basically, I believe it's January or February this year in different tweets. And now he's decided he wants to attack them, blaming them for the failures of the United States Postal Service. Claiming all sorts of things. I will give you one tweet here since it's right in front of my face. I am right about Amazon costing the United States Post Office massive amounts of money for being their delivery boy. Amazon should pay these costs plus, or uh, pay these costs plus, and not have them borne out by the American taxpayer. Many billions of dollars. Post office leaders don't have a clue, or do they? So let's unpack this line by line for a second. I'm right about Amazon costing the United States office massive amounts of money and being their delivery boy. The obvious one is, obviously, they are Amazon's delivery boy. Why might I say that? Because they're the post office. It is their job, let me repeat, it is their job to move packages from one part of the country to another or around town or whatever. That's their function. They're a post office. They deliver the post. It sounds pretty obvious to me. Apparently Donald Trump doesn't understand what a post office is. You know, no one's ever accused him of being intelligent except himself. Let's go back, though. Amazon costing the United States Post Office massive amounts of money. This is an utter lie. Now, it is true that the deal that they have with Amazon is below market value, but not below profit. So Amazon, every time Amazon ships something via the post office, guess what? The post office is making money on every single one of those. So when you have Amazon Prime and you buy a package and you have a parcel and you have it shipped from, and they ship it from, say, Idaho and you get it in Texas, the post office has made money on that shipment. Is it a profit that's below market value? Yes. But it's money that they make up in volume. That's how deals work with things. So, yes, they do, they do have a deal with Amazon that is below market value. Or what a private company, for example, would pay. Um, or it would charge, like say FedEx or UPS or whatever. But think, if they were to all of a sudden get their rates jacked up at, at, the, at, US, uh, at the U.S. Postal Service, they would just go to UPS or FedEx for a, and get a cheaper rate than they're probably gonna. They'd probably get otherwise, because they have massive buying power. They're like Walmart. You know, you can get things cheaper if you have mass appeal. You know, if a if you have a if you if you do a lot of business, you're gonna get a lower you're gonna get a lower rate. Now, you can sit there and say that being under market value may not be the best idea, seeing the problems that they have. But we'll get back to that later on in this video. Amazon should pay these costs plus and not have them borne out of the American taxpayer. Well, as I mentioned before, Amazon actually does pay, pay, and it is profitable. Therefore, the American taxpayer is not paying a dime to subsidize Amazon, unlike we're doing for billionaires now with that trillion-dollar tax cut. Many billions of dollars, post office leaders don't have a clue, or do they? 
So he's making as if it's a conspiracy. The U.S. Postal Service is deliberately, deliberately bilking taxpayers out of billions of dollars. Another lie. It does not make any sense. In a previous text, he accused Amazon of not paying taxes. One, when he's basically said when he hasn't had to pay any taxes, that made him smart. But now that it's Jeff Bezos over at Amazon, he's, an, he's evil for not paying any taxes. You add on to that, that he just gave them a huge tax cut. And the fact that in 2016, I believe it was, Amazon paid, no, it was 2017, Amazon paid $790 million in taxes. More than Donald Trump paid, I'm sure, or else he would have released his tax returns by now. And so, he, then he goes on to say, and in that same tweet that he was talking about the other day, this is from the other day, I can't find that exact tweet, but he claimed that they didn't pay sales tax. And yes, prior to 2012, Amazon wasn't paying sales tax. But starting in 2012, they started paying California and every other state that required sales tax. Not all states have sales tax. So are they paying sales tax in all states? No, because not all states have sales tax. Apparently, Donald Trump is such an idiot that he doesn't know this. How would he not know that some states have sales tax and some states don't? So either he doesn't know or he's a bald-faced liar. But let's get on to some, a few facts here. Parcels and packages sh being shipped are now 28% roughly of the U.S. Postal Service revenue. 28%. That's an increase over the last, you know, from before Amazon had a deal with the post office. It's actually the only bright spot in the ledger for the U.S. Postal Service. It actually increased its, its uh, funding. It actually increased what they were paying. You know, it increased the revenue for that segment. Now, not everybody wants to believe me on that. And I don't understand why no one ever wants to listen. But, yeah, you don't have to believe me. I will read you some stats directly from... Directly from the United States Postal Service website. Their first quarter results um, stemming from fiscal year... Uh, part of the fiscal year October 1st, 2017 to the December 31st, 2017. Where, yes, they did take... A loss. We've been taking losses steadily over at the post. They've been taking losses at the post office steadily since 2006. And there are some laws that came around for that. But all in all, they're, they, they find a way to, to survive. But let me read this whole thing right here. Total revenue for the quarter was $19 billion. $19 billion. $19 billion. Essentially unchanged compared to the same quarter last year. Revenue from the first quarter, or first class mail and marketing mail, increased, or decreased by $309 million and $248 million, respectively. Due largely to lower volumes, and, and that's one of the main, main things, is less people are using the Postal Service. But here's where here's the kicker. Revenue from the shipping and packages business, as in parcels, as in Amazon, increased by $505 million, or 9.3% during the quarter, from the quarter before. If they didn't know what they were doing, this section would not be making so much money. 
This section right here is one of the very few bright spots of the United States Postal Service. Now, there are things we could do to help the Postal Service, but lying about them is not one. Making conspiracies to make the people not trust them is not one. The Postal Service is not bilking the United States government or the United States taxpayer to subsidize Amazon. That's not what's happening. Trump is lying, period. Now, they are below market value. We could have a discussion on that. Maybe rates should go up. But let's be very clear. There is a law from 2006 signed by then-President George W. Bush that requires all deals to be at cost or above. That's a requirement. They have to be profitable. So at cost, I'm sorry, at cost is not correct. They have to be a, they have to make profit, period. They cannot, they cannot be negatives. They cannot be, they cannot charge less than cost. That is reviewed every single year to ensure compliance. Oversight, I believe, is Congress. And I do not believe that the United States Postal Service would be purposely defrauding America. Could they be? Sure, but I doubt it. And I don't think Congress would be get away with it. Republicans have controlled Congress since 2010. Why would they allow why would they have allowed the Postal Service to get away with that for ten year, for almost almost eight year over eight years? Why? That's right, they wouldn't have. They would have chi they would have dinged Obama on that every single second of every single day. Speaking of Obama, could you imagine? Could you imagine what would happen if Barack Obama had attacked an American company for being successful? I mean, he even came close to mentioning something like that, and the right lost their minds. But let's get to the nitty gritty, shall we? Now, you may want to know, well, then if this isn't true and he's lying, why, why, pray tell, would Donald Trump lie about Amazon and the United States Postal Service? Because he has a personal vendetta against Jeff Bezos of Amazon. There's a few reasons for that. A, a Forbes article came out the other day saying that one of the reasons is that Amazon has cost um, Donald Trump roughly $400 million dollars in recent history through different th different places closing and things like that and so that's a bit of a vendetta he has against Amazon he doesn't like the fact that he's lost money now here's the bigger one and this is where this stuff becomes more childish and childlike than ever before Donald Trump is mentioned a lot in the Washington Post. You know, they're, they're constantly reporting on the ongoings inside the White House, the leaks and everything. A lot of the leaks go through them. And he doesn't like it. Who owns the Washington Post nowadays? That's right. Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Sure, is the Washington, does the Washington Post have a, an anti-Trump slant? I'll admit it does. But you're supposed to be above that as the President of the United States. If these people want to post crazy stuff that, you know, either hasn't been verified, whatever, let them fail on their own. But know that if you hurt Amazon, you're hurting their shareholders, you're hurting Americans that rely on their products being sold on Amazon, you have a lot of mom and pop shops, a lot of a lot of poor, uh, you know, small businesses that sell their products on Amazon. I would know. I buy them a lot. I buy I buy I buy a lot of gifts from shops, you know, from small businesses around the country. You know, I sent my mom an engraved um, thing at one point. 
from a shop, from, you know, from a, a small business. I, I ordered, I forget what else I ordered. I ordered something else. Oh, I ordered a, um, a Beanie Baby that I had found that I thought was really cool. It was a Coca-Cola Hippo. And I thought it was awesome. And so I was like, hey, I'll buy that. Why not? Being a huge fan of the of the company and hippos being my favorite wild animal. You know, the best of both worlds, right? And so I thought, hey, this would be a great idea. Why not? And I got a little letter in the mail. Thank you for supporting our small business. Amazon helps a lot of businesses make a lot of money. So if you hurt them, you hurt the small business owners that are making money via Amazon. You hurt people like me who can't easily get out to shop. And by ki- trying to kill Amazon, you're not going to bring back brick and mortar stores. We're beyond brick and mortar. So to hurt Amazon doesn't make any sense. Oh, and I forget to mention the hundreds of thousands of workers that Amazon employs across this country. From delivery personnel, you know, for, you know, same day delivery, food delivery, things like that. To do that all over a personal vendetta because you don't like the fact that Amazon, um, Amazon's owner owns a, a newspaper that says unflattering things about you. That's childish. That's a mob tactic. That That's not something, that's below the office of president. So I will say to you right now that Donald Trump is disrespecting the office of the President of the United States. Now, our last president and our previous, some of our previous presidents have done some terrible things that I thought were below the integrity of the office. But this man continues to do this day in and day out, and I don't understand. Why in the world would somebody act like this? Now, like I said earlier on, yes, if the deals are below market value, maybe we could work on increasing funding for that. But since parcels are not the problem, since they're the ones making all the money, why would you attack the one company or one of the main companies that is helping keep the thing afloat at all? I guarantee you that 9 9.3% increase in packages and parcels would be a lot lower in that that increase probably wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Amazon. So let me lay lay it out for you here. He is wrong that Amazon is taking the U.S. Postal Service for a ride. This is verified by yearly reviews for compliance based on a 2006 law. By attacking Amazon over this childish problem with Jeff, that he has with Jeff Bezos and his now and, and with the Washington Post, you're going to hurt thousands of workers across this country. You've already you're already tanking um, their their stock their stock price right now, and by doing so, you are hurting the pieces of the the American people that have their stock in their portfolios. So, this is not something that is reasonable. This is not something that a president should be doing. This is a mob tactic that will only hurt America even further than what's already happened over the last three or four decades. And I understand the problem. I understand people are upset that Amazon has all the success and all these brick-and-mortar stores are closing shop. But it is not Amazon's fault that they found a new way to do things. Is that not how capitalism is supposed to work? Amazon has found a way to be successful. And they have found a way to do it. And they have found a way to be to stay that way consistently. Even by paying taxes. Even by paying state taxes. And there's only one thing that Donald Trump's been right about. That, yeah, the Washington Post is owned 
by one Jeff Bezos. At the end of the day, I don't understand this. I think it's, it's lame and it's hurting. It's hurting this company, which is going to hurt people. And if our last president had done this, could you imagine the outcry? They would be calling him a communist, a socialist, a Kenyan, a Russian, a Marxist for attacking private business. Or I guess they're technically a public business since they are traded on the stock market. But could you imagine Barack Obama attacking a company for being successful? I have never in my years seen a president purposely try to tank a company over a personal vendetta. Barack Obama didn't even try to tank Fox News for crying out loud. Anyhow, I hope you're having a great day, and this has been The Big Ranch Show. I'm your host, Jacob Keck. I'll see you down the road.